In this video, we're going to replace the transformer style coil pack with a conventional ignition coil pack. All right, so the reason why I want to change over that ignition coil is just that the transformer style isn't really the one that um, should be on there, although it's, it's been working fine. There's no issues with it. Um, the one I have purchased is just the standard ignition coil type. Um, there's a part number there if you need to know it. So I ordered this from Mini Kingdom in Sydney, Australia. Uh, they supply um, parts. Um, it's, they're, they're Br British Motor Imports is the um, name of the main company, but they supply um, any most British cars. So let's have a look at this coil pack. So there we have it here. So it comes with that um, clamp on there, and that's what I'm going to manufacture a, a some type of bracket to help that clamp on there. But that's I've got to figure that out. Uh, positive terminal here, negative here, and then the main connector here to go to the distributor. Uh, so let's have a look at this. So we can do a initial test to make sure this is okay. So. The primary circuit is um, between these two terminals, so we want to have the um, volt or the, the multimeter set to ohms. We'll put that on about 20 ohms, or oh, sorry, 200 ohms there. I'll just put that there so you can see. So the resistance between in the primary circuit uh, should be around like 0.4 to 2 ohms. I'll just make sure that multimeter is working. So 0.6 should be zero resistance. So let's just test what we got here. And we have 3.2 ohms. So that's um, within the specification what it should be. Okay, so I just need to change the scale now to just test the um, secondary circuit. So I'll put that to 20,000. So the typical value should be between 6,000 and 15,000 ohms. So just let's just see what we've got here. Make sure I get the right terminal. Okay, that's positive on that side. To the center. And I'm getting 10,000 ohms, which indicates that this coil is good and functioning correctly, or should function correctly. So let's take the old one off and test that. Let's um, just test what readings we get on this transformer coil. So the primary circuit, we'll do that first of all, positive and negative. I've got the multimeter set at 200 ohms. Uh, so this should be between 0.4 and 2. And it's reading, yep, 2.3 ohms. Okay, the next thing we want to test is the secondary circuit, and I'll put the multimeter to 20,000 ohms. So that connection leads to the coil, and I'll connect that to positive. So this should be between 6,000 and 15,000 ohms, and we're getting 8,000 ohms. So as you can see, it's it was it's working fine there aren't any issues with it but um, i just want to change it because um the traditional coil kind of looks better and that's what everyone else uses so next thing i need to sort out is brackets let me just talk you through some brackets so traditionally if the car had a generator that's the actual bracket um, that would be used that would screw onto the generator but because i've got an alternator um, I did have a look and see whether that would fit around it, but obviously it's a lot larger, or the alternator is a lot larger than the generator. But something along these sort of lines. Um, 
if you have a look in the pictures here, sort of that's just showing one of the generator. That's got a generator too. Uh, trying to see where. Uh, I yeah. So some people sort of mount it. Oh, where are we looking? There we go. Mount it sort of right there. Um, but the the reason why I can't sort of mount it here, it's because my um, oil pipes are in the way. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so I've got the oil feed in the way. So it doesn't really, um, oh, it sort of fits in there, but I'll still have to mess around with brackets no matter which way I do it. Because what I was thinking is having making a similar bracket to bolt onto here, um, that sort of sits along here, and then that way the bracket for the coil can sort of sit there somehow. So that that's one option. Um, putting it up here seems like it just, just keeps it out of the way. It just depends on how I make that bracket. So it's going to need a bit of thinking and I'll see what else I can find on the internet. Okay, so I've given this some thought and I think the easiest way for now to mount this, um, that's an older bracket. Um, so that's going to get altered onto there. And then what I will do I may just use an angle grinder or a hacksaw just to cut that piece off it. Um, so that'll be mounted there, like that. And then the coil kind of will sit about here. So that way I, I can steal these, um, the terminals can still reach that fine without an issue, so there's no issues there. And also, I can still get to the dipstick as well. So I, I did look on the internet, quite a few people have done it that way. Um, but the brackets they're using, it just doesn't come with two connectors on it. So I may either hacksaw or angle grind it. Probably just use a hacksaw, make um, less noise. Um, but that will sort of sit in like that. So I think that is the way I will go. So I'll prepare the bracket and then just see how it fits in there. So that's all um, tightened up now. I've re-tightened up all these bolts because I had to loosen them a bit to adjust that bracket. But um, that's all in place. It's nice and tight. Um, I've got all the connectors back on. I'll just put a bit of electrical tape there. It's just because if you're stuffing around and it's dark in the middle of the road somewhere, at least you know it's sides positive. It does say a plus there, but it's a bit hard to see. Uh, so they're all connected back up. Let me just check one, two, three, and four. I just need to um, connect the battery back up and then I'll give it a quick test. So that seemed to run okay, so I'll leave it there. 
and thanks for watching my videos.